Okay, so Ben, going back to entrepreneurship, how did you start your business journey? All right, so at some point in time after being homeless and I turned, you know, to a point where I had nothing and nothing to lose, I started to work for somebody. Then when I worked, I worked as a dispatcher and a very short amount of time after that, a couple of weeks after that, I said, you know what, I can't do this. I want to do something that's better. And I went into carpet cleaning. Mm -hmm. After going into carpet cleaning, I went back to kind of being a little bit of a troublemaker. And then I found myself at the age of 18 going to jail. When I was in jail, I realized that everybody in the jail liked me so much. <laughs> And I didn't understand why. <laughs> so in jail, you have like sections. There is the paisas, which are the guys who doesn't speak any English, they only speak Spanish. Yeah. There's like the serenios, which are the Hispanic guys. There is the white people, there is the blacks, there is the age. So anyone that's other, like me, I'm Jewish. I go with the blacks. The blacks will take me in. And when they did, and I was with the blacks. Then I got him to start doing little prayers with me in Hebrew. Oh. I brought the rabbi and the <laughs> rabbi would bring me my tefillin. And I would ask the rabbi to do for us Shabbat dinners. Oh, wow. And then I start getting them to wear a yarmulke and doing Shabbat dinners with me and start practicing Judaism. Wow. And take in consideration, I'm an 18 year old boy that's teaching right now 40, 50 year old men who are huge troublemakers who have been there for 10, 15 years, mm. who will never see the daylight for the rest of their life go into Judaism. Mm. And then I realized that I actually have very, very good social skills. So before going out, I said to myself, I'm never coming back here. And when I went back to see the judge, she said, look, I'm going to let you out today, but I never want to see you back here ever. Wow. And I said, you'll never see me back here again. And my mom and my dad picked me up when I got released. Um, and my dad was eating ice cream. It was the first ice cream I had in a very long time. Wow. I, it was the best ice cream I've ever had. <laughs> And I said, you know what? I'm going to start looking into working, mm -hmm. working a real job. And I went and I grabbed the Israeli newspaper. In LA, all the Israelis work together. Yeah. So I grabbed the Israeli newspaper and I started calling companies. And I said, I'd like to come meet with you and I'd like to work as a salesperson. Mm -hmm. So I realized I'm so good in selling, you know, talking to people. So. I call this guy and I come to his office and he hires me and he tells me that uh, Sunday he's going to talk to me. This was like middle of the week. He tells me Sunday I'm going to talk to you and I'm going to give you a van and you're going to use that van to go out and start doing sales with another guy that's going to teach you. And I said, perfect. As I'm leaving the office, another guy comes in, looks at me, recognizes me, goes back to the office and tells that guy, do not hire him. No. He's a troublemaker. Wow. I call this guy on Sunday. The guy doesn't answer me. I call him on Monday, doesn't answer me. Tuesday, I show up to the office. I said, hey, man, he told me on Sunday. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah I'm going to call you. I'm going to call you. Give me a few days. Something came up. My apologies. Again, I come back after a few days because he doesn't answer me. End up, he didn't take me to work. And the reason is people talked about me. Wow. I speak to another guy. I go to his office. I meet with him. He falls in love with me. He says, I'm going to start next week. Tells the guy who's supposed to train me that he's going to train me. The guy tells him, there's no way I'm not going anywhere with that guy. Hmm. He's a troublemaker on a whole nother level. Hmm. I don't want any trouble. I don't want him to work with us also doesn't answer me anymore about four people like that until i got a hold of one guy who was in israel he went on a trip to israel and i call him and i tell him look i'm homeless 
You know, I'm back on the street. I'm homeless. I need a job. And he's like, I'll be back in two weeks. In two weeks, I'll be back and I'll hire you. A few days after that, I call him again. I'm like, yeah, are you for sure going to be back in the next 11 days? He's like, yeah, I told you I am. I'm going to be back. I call him a few days later. And then again, a few days later, and he goes to me, hey, buddy, listen to me. I'm on a vacation. Stop calling me. If you're going to call me one more time, I'm not going to hire you. Wow. I told him, no, 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 please. I, I'm really sorry. Now, look, I wasn't, I was a guy who was able to do anything. I could have went and become a gangster. I could have went and did all these other things. I said, no, I'm going to go the right way. So I put my head down and I'm telling this guy that I'm sorry. And I said, please, you just have to understand. That was the first time in that call that I told him that I'm homeless. Mm -hmm. And he's like, okay, I understand. He's like, are you really homeless? How, you're Israeli. I'm like, yeah, I just don't want to live with my dad. I don't want to be there. I want to go do things on my own. And I've been here before. I'm, I know I could figure things out. Anyways, he comes back and he goes, look, I have a carpet cleaning business, but I want to start doing air conditioning. Have you ever done air conditioning? I said, look, I've never done anything except fighting. <laughs> But I promise you, wherever you're going to send me, I will figure it out and I will bring home a sale. Amazing. And I literally, he gave me a van and I was sleeping in the van. <laughs> and then I was showering at 24 Hour Fitness. The first project I go into, I go up to the attic and I see that all the air ducts are made out of asbestos and they're broken and all of that. And I don't know anything. I just went on like... I don't remember where, Google or whatever, start to ch try to learn about it. I didn't know anything about the job. Yes. And I call him and I'm like, here's the picture. This is what the attic looks like. He goes, I think that's the best. I go, what, really? Anyways, I go downstairs, I talk to the clients, I explain to them what it is. I take pictures, I go on Google, I see that it is what we think it is. I call a special company, they come, they do the full inspection, they tell them that it is what it is, and they're releasing like asbestos fibers into the house because it's inside of the oh. air ducts. Yes. And they're like, we want to change it. And they're like, okay, so they gave me a price and I told them a price, which was like double than the price that I got from the other guys. Mm. And that's how you do it. Like in construction, you usually do it times, th times three, but I didn't know, so I only did times two. And I made a sale and they were like, we'll only go with you, Ben. We trust only you. So because I was more of like a hard ass kind of gangster guy when I was a younger kid, I said, well, how do I change that? So I put my hair to the side. I shaved my face. I put on fake glasses to look like a nerd. And then I would wear a hat like that goes up just to look like a nerd. So people would accept me in their home, you know? Because I was like, nobody wants this badass guy in their home. But truly, I went back to who's the authentic Ben. Yeah. Not the Ben that the world has recreated. You know, all the shit that I ate from this world. And now it's like the new Ben. Yes. Who is the real Ben? The authentic Ben. So I brought truly the authentic Ben. And people love me.